welcome to Area 51 Raceway live feed for a brass chassis build. So today I am going over how to uh, start building a brass chassis. And this video I'm doing so later on people go watch it. If nobody's here, no big deal. But I just decided to do a live feed so if somebody wanted to join in, they could. So the car that I'm building the chassis for is this Mercury Marauder. 125th scale. This is a 64 Mercury Marauder from the AMT kit that came out in 1995. It's kind of a nice kit because they give you a roll bar too. If you want to not make your roll bar, you could use the existing roll bar that comes in the kit. And uh, even seat belts or hood straps, excuse me. <laughs> look like seat belts, but they're hood straps. A little custom stuff on here, but I, maybe we'll just use this roll cage to be honest because that's pretty much pretty cool. Uh, I could do my own, just takes a little bit more time and work, but if you have one there done already, why not just use it? So on this build, what I do here on the jeweler's board is I kind of put the dots here, and this is kind of like my wheelbase. So this car is from wheelbase to wheelbase about 12 millimeters. So this is basically 12 millimeters, and that's just the guide. And this front part is where it would be the front of the chassis would be this line. I made a line also down the middle so I could kind of have a reference point of the center part of the chassis, as you can see. So before I even start soldering anything, I'll get the model kit and I'll get my wheels together here and my tires. So these are CB Design uh, 0696s. Uh, so these are 124th uh, classic steel c30 seconds and these have no rib so these are no rib tires as you can see they just come right off now usually i cut this tube about four millimeters but since i have this part that sticks out in the wheel i had to cut it shorter so on this one i kind of went to three maybe three point Almost four, well, I'd say 3.75, I guess you'd say. I can't really read that too well right now. But that's basically kind of where I have it at. And then I put the bushings in and the tube that I cut. And uh, I use 8130 uh, KNS brass steel. It's a 730 seconds tube, brass tube. And then I use a, a you know, little cutter for it, a little pipe cutter. And you just basically mark your mark with a marker. And you just cut it to size. And what I do is I get the body. And I put it right here. To see how it'll fit in between the wheel wells. And this is a little tight, but I think it'll be okay. I still got some wiggle room there, as you can see. That's That should be fine. I mean, if, you, if it's a point where it does, you know, rub, you will actually true the tires down. So I, I don't think it'll affect it. But if it does, you could take a little bit off in here. I'm going a little tight because I want it kind of close to the wheel well. We'll see how it comes out. You know, I may have to fix them. I don't know. Maybe it'll be fine. Depends how so high I position the body when I mount the body later on. But that I think that'll be fine. Like I said, there's 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 room for if I want to, you know, leave the axle loose that it'll be able to go back and forth without hitting. So it's it's a little tight, like I said, but I think it'll be fine. Now the front ones are the same wheel. The uh CB, uh, CBD 0696, no rib tires, but these tires are a little bit smaller. So I want to give it kind of a little lower profile in the front. And these will fit in there just fine. This is a teeny bit, teeny bit shorter, but not much. But as you can see, it'll, it's, it's fine. It's got a little wiggle room and you're good. And that's what you want to do initially is make sure that you have the right wheel width. So you don't, um, you know, Put it together and then you can't get the body on and then you're, you're kind of like fighting with it so it's kind of like a pre-fit there is what you're doing so now that i've gotten my size down and everything what i'm going to do is i obviously remove the wheels and the tires i don't need it uh, these tires right here are the no rib uh, paul gauge urethane tires they're called donut tires so these are the uh, pgt 28 120s and then these small ones are a little bit smaller they're 26 by 12 instead of 28 are the PGD 26120s. So that kind of gives you an idea if you want, you know, to go with this wheel. If you do go with the uh, uh, CB Classic wheel, 
which is the one with the rib, then this part right here, the wheel won't be there, so it'll be flush. So then you could cut this to four millimeters exactly. That's usually my my best bet with most of these 125th scale cars. Uh, and then again, pre-fit them in the body to make sure you're good, and then you won't have to worry about having to trim the body if you need to. We'll see what happens in my case here if I'm on the money or not uh, later on. So what I'll do is I'll take these and put them off to the side and uh, put these over here. And I'm going to take the tube here that I cut out and the bushings out because I put the bushings in so I can have it all together. So I'll set those aside. You'll see I have other pieces cut out already, pre-cut out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this in here into the motor bracket. And uh, I'm going to put it right right here where I have my little red mark as part of the wheelbase, and I'll have to probably fiddle with that a little. And I'll put a pin here. And this is a jeweler's board where they do jewelry, basically, you know, soldering jewelry and stuff. So this is what I use. And I'm going to pin this as closely as I can there and pin this right here to hold it in place. You want to hold the motor bracket in place while you're soldering your axle tube. And then I got this right there. And that's basically what I want to do is solder this, well, excuse me, put this in place so it doesn't move. And I want to do is center this as best I can. So what you can do is get your ruler and you just give it a little, I'll use millimeters, give it a little, you know, shot there. So this is what, half a millimeter? And you could go back here and check again. And let me get this lower. This will be a little over half a millimeter. So then you could kind of move this in just a teeny bit and kind of check it again. And you're going to have a little over a half a millimeter there on the next dash. A little mark there. And then right here. Uh, it's about fairly close enough right there and that'll do it doesn't have to be perfect if it's a teeny bit off don't don't you know worry yourself and then what I will do is I will put a pin here to keep it in place and a pin right here I want to get it around the right hole and just like that and that's going to hold that right there and then you could remeasure again we look pretty good there I don't think it's going to be an issue so I'll just check again and, uh, and we'll check right here. And I think we're pretty darn, that should be right on the money, pretty darn close. So, and there you go. This is in place. It's all together. And the one step we're going to do next is we're going to solder this. So I'm going to turn on my soldering iron. And no, this is not vanilla extract. This is actually flux. This came in handy because there's an eyedropper on it. And I like to just drop it on there. But... If you don't have that little bottle with a little needle in, like an oil bottle, an old oil bottle, you could just, you know, put it on there. As far as keeping this clean, you don't have to, I mean, it, the flux is going to help the solder flow. This is the most important part here. If you don't have this, the solder is going to clump up. You're going to get frustrated. And you won't need as much solder as you would when you, when you solder these on. It doesn't take much. Let me move this stuff out of the way. And I'm going to show you how I do it. And I got my iron ready, and I got my solder right here. And uh, I'm going to solder away here. And I usually solder from the inside here because just so it'll look nice from the outside of the car. It's just me. You could do it either way. So I'm going to put a drop here like that. going to get my iron. going to get a little... Well, first let me clean it with a sponge here. i right, get my iron nice and clean, see? Want a clean iron, that's important. Now I'm gonna a little bit of solder here, like that. And then if you need like a little something like this to hold it down, you could do that also. And then I'm gonna do is add heat. And you should see as I just keep it there, you're gonna see the solder flow all the way around this. And like so. And then that's it. I'm gonna let it go. Clean my iron again. Excuse me, move the camera there. And you're going to see that, how it flowed all the way around. Let me turn on my other lights here. Apologize, forgot about these here. I got my other little lights here to kind of help out better. So you can see how that flowed all the way around. I don't know if you can see that. I'm kind of glaring it now. 
but the solder has flowed all the way around the tube and that's what you're looking for just like that that's that's a perfect solder that's all you need not much so i'll do it again on this side that side's pretty much ready to go there so you don't have to worry if you have any movement now it's 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 solid at least on that side you'll be good going to get a little bit of solder and i'm going to go on this side and apply it to it and just hold on to it like that and hold it because all you're doing is uh, putting heat so that the solder will flow with the where the flux is at. That's why the flux is real thin and it's going to flow all over. And like that. And that should be it right there. And you basically soldered your axle tube onto your motor bracket. And as you can see, it's flowed all the way around the way I like it. And... Looks pretty good. I, th I think we got a winner there. I hope you can see that. <laughs> I don't know if these are helping or not, or they're just making you blind, blinding you on the brass. So let me turn that off for a sec there. And uh, now we got that part done. You could turn your iron off so you could, you know, not leave it on. Mine will turn off automatically. So this does get hot. So no, this isn't perfume. <laughs> this is a little thing that I used to cool off brass because brass does get hot. And this will retain a lot of heat even after you're done and you start grabbing it. It'll be still warm. See, these pins will get warm too. So that's that's the tube right there. I hope you could see that real well. That's on there pretty good. So the next step we're going to do is put our bushings on. Now we got our tube onto the motor bracket and we're, we're all ready to go here. And you just leave it right there with the pins. Don't let it get move around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put our bushings for our uh, or our oil lights as they call them bushing oil lights and what i usually do is put a pin here not i don't push down all the way this because i don't want to cock this pit this bushing and push it out because otherwise the top of the bushing will stick out and then when you try and put your axle in there you're going to find that it's not going to align and you're going to get real frustrated and we don't want you to go that route so just hold it there in place you can see it's there it goes the other bushing i hope i didn't lose it oh goody See, this is what happens with little parts. Uh, I'll have to probably grab another bushing. If I can, I'll find it. But you basically... Uh, well, that was a disaster there. And I don't know where it went. <laughs> As I mean about little parts, man. You, one thing you get to make sure is... Uh, I'm sure it's around here somewhere. So, oh, here it is. Ah, see, went into back here. Well, so anyways, <laughs> there. sorry about that, folks. So you're going to see... You want this very straight here. You don't want it uh, crooked or anything. You want it nice and straight. And then what you're going to do is uh, once you got it positioned, uh, and let me see if I could see the chat feed. Uh, okay. Let me see a second. Hold on a second. Uh, oh, great. Looks like my privacy guide is not. Damn it. Uh, all right. Well, it looks like the chat is on, I hope. If it is, I could see it because I have the camera next to me here. So I'll move on here. I'm going to put some flux there again, right in this spot. Oops, excuse me, right there. A little dab will do you. <laughs> and then I'm going to get, turn on the iron. Iron doesn't take long to, to fire up for me. It'll take like a few seconds. It'll be ready to go. And uh, the type of iron you use, you could get that Weller iron on Amazon. That's the orange one. It's got like a little station. That's good enough. And you want to get a wide type of, uh, you see this this head? You want a wide type like that. You don't want a one that's a point because that's for electronics. And then what happens is that's not going to make the heat, distribute the heat to your part. You're going to be pinpointing stuff and then you're going to get frustrated because it's not transferring the heat all around. And then all I'll do is I'll get a little solder like this because there's already a lot of solder on here. I'm going to use my left hand here so you can see it. And then it's ready to go. And then hit it here. And I don't hear any fizzing. So hold on a second. Let me check here. Let me do that again. Something went wrong. Hold on a second. Let's add a little bit more flux. Let me see what happened to me. I didn't have enough solder on there. Like so. And I'm doing this left handed, like I said, so you can see. And then I'm going to. Then you can hear that. Oh, shoot, a little bit off there. So you can hear that sound like that. I'm trying to not get in the way of the camera, but you see where you're kind of hitting it all right there. This way you... 
And again, as you're adding heat to this, and where the flux is, the solder is going to flow. So there's that right there. All right. And so far, so good. There's a little bit there you can see that maybe I missed. And again, it's not the end of the world. Let's just put a little bit more flux, like so. And then you go back over it a teeny bit. There's solder already on there. Oop, darn it. You want to go like that you can go underneath it you just want to get the whole bushing and this thing's moving is okay right now because you got most of it in there and again it's going to be hot so that's why i use my file here to push it back down and that bushing's in and you can see that or it's just all around it which is fine you've soldered it in there and if you could see that and it got all the way around it like i wanted to so we're good um, so what we'll do is we'll get the next bushing. Keep in mind this thing may be pretty warm right now, but I think I should be able to find to get away with it. And we're going to push it in there. And then again, we're going to make sure it's just holding it in place. This one actually went in straight, so that's fine. The other one was crooked because the way the position it's at in the hole is more forward. And if I put it in the next hole, it'll be too far back. You can see right there, we got a position. We're going to put flux again. And then we're gonna get the soldering iron. And I see it right here. And we're gonna get a solder. And I hope you can see this right here. Let me put my light here. And you can hear that fizzling sound. That's what you want. You could go around like that, underneath it. You just wanna make sure you're getting the bushing soldered onto the tube. And this one may be a little bit better than the other one because I was doing it with another hand. And as far as I could see, I think this one's pretty good. Folks, uh, let me get under here a little bit. And you could hit it right there a little like that, a little touch up. And get a teeny bit of solder there. Just a little bit. There you go. So you can see, you hear the solder, the uh, flux too, kind of fizzle. And that's that bushing right there. So, now what I'm gonna do is spray it down to cool it off. Don't worry about it getting wet. And uh, as you can see, it's still transmitting quite a bit of heat there even after I sprayed it down, but now it's okay to handle. Now you can take a look at it. So what I'll do is I'll pull this off. Cause I could always put this back on. Uh, in the spot that I have those pins on and I'm going to show you right here see right there we got quite a good amount of solder maybe a teeny bit messy see underneath how we kind of right there and that's not a problem so if you see that kind of stuff you can simply go back over here and hold it on hold on to this temporarily and then I was going to hot and do that and you see that just cleans it up makes it a little bit neater you know, see it's just a little bit warm there you go right here Clean it up a little if you want. I mean, there's, you could put a little heat on it, hold on to it, just do, don't do too long. So you can see everything is all the way around it, all the solder on the axle, the bracket and the axle tube and then the bushings are in there. So that's that part right there. I'll turn this off temporarily. I don't think these are helping too much. I don't know if it is or not, so I'll bring that closer. Um, so you have everything done, you have, you have this part done. Uh, one important thing about the axle is that you want to make sure that, and it will be a little rough to slide in at first, like see how it is right now, because it's been through a lot of heat. As you work it like that, it may come looser. What I usually do is get a 332nd drill bit and a pin vise, and I kind of just kind of clean it up like this. See how there's a little rough spot there? You could feel resistance. Clean it up, and you could run your axles. <laughs> Go through it, run your axle through. That's still a little bit hard. And again, you could work work this through. And you really want the axle to be really, really super slide in there easily. Sometimes there'll be burrs, excuse me, using the wrong one. There'll be burrs on the end here, and you could get a little rat tail file and just go like this lightly. Uh, just like that. And you can go over here like that also. that out 
you get your axle again and fit it again a little bit better see it's like a little bit easier that's nice right there the whole point of this is when you get this all done and said and done you want this axle to actually fall through so you could work this a little bit more it's a teeny bit rough because you want least resistance here because this is going to give it a nice roll and a nice just just nice smooth operation it's really important and again you just run your pin bias through again if you want to like that with your 332 drill bit back and forth you could go a little bit here with the rat tail file just a teeny bit trim off like the burrs on the edge here because remember we just heated this up quite a bit clean up a little bit there and then just test it again see a lot better there once you uh, get this together, you could just, you know, work with the axle and just see if, see how it drops in like that. I like it to do that. That's how I, my preference is, see, because it should be able to easily go in there because this will really spin smoothly, you know, once you get it all oiled up and going. So that's just an important, important little point that I, that I tell people about that, you know, tell everyone about that. And what we're going to do is put it back in place, loosen that up. Cause it's a little tight and causing it to kick up and what we could do is get this in here again like that it doesn't have to go in all the way as long as it's holding it right there and then we could get more pins and kind of do some on the back here if you want to keep it from moving back which is not a problem just like so see this is moving a little I'm stubborn stubborn Anyways, so there's your, uh, got it all lined up. And again, like I said, this center part here is just a reference, you know. If it's off a little or you feel like it's pointing one direction after you do it, don't freak out or anything. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's just a guide or reference. It should, should be straight when you do it, but don't uh, get too, too concerned too much with that. So here's the next part that we do. So we do the chassis rails or next. So the, the side rails are, you know, part of the chassis here, the rails. So this is, uh, this is brass stock 8264. So this is uh, one eighth by one quarter rectangle or call it rectangle brass tube. Okay, I cut this the same size. There's one big piece, just divide it in half. If you have any left over here, it's no big deal. I cut this so that it'll fit this car already. This is a shorter piece. I cut a few off. And what I'm going to do is put these off to the side here. And what we're going to do is solder it to the back of the motor bracket to just the end here, which is fine. Right about there. Just flush with that. Now, you could use brass stock um, 8151 or 8150. So 8150 is 3 30 seconds. And 8151 is 1 1 eighth. And uh, basically... It's just a narrower channel. I mean, it depends on you what you want to do. It'll still work just fine for a 125th scale car. Uh, I'm just using this just to kind of show, you know, this type of chassis that I have. And I've done this kind and then with the thinner one. So it's up to you how you want to do it. You can put any one you want on there. It's, it's going to work the same. So, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put these right here to against the bracket like that and you could do one at a time so there's one right there and then what we want to do is make it flush with the back of the bracket like so let me see if i can see that booger yeah it's pretty good right there and then what you could do also is just get a pin here and just put it right there to keep it from moving around and then put one in the back here has to keep it from moving back right there and then i'll usually put one right here just to keep it you know you want to keep it flush with this right there with the motor bracket which is fine looks pretty good right there and then again what we're going to do is we're going to fire up the iron and we're going to do flux there get all my stuff out of the way here and get a little messy and uh, we're going to solder that part so, let me get the iron turn on. I'm going to get a little flux. I'm just going to put some here. Oh, got stuck there. And just like that. 
I got the iron ready. And then what I'm gonna do is get solder here, just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is apply heat here. Oh, the mortar bracket moved a little. So what I usually will do also to hold it down is I'm just applying heat to this and let the solder flow. I'll usually, it's being a little stubborn here. Like that looks like not too much solder flowed there, so I'm gonna put some more. See, this is gonna help it flow, so you gotta remember that if you don't get any flow, then you're gonna have to see there's the heat that I want to hear. Just like that. And that is that right there. You can see where it, I don't know if you can see where it flowed back there. Let me turn on my lights here. You can see where it flowed back there. See the little spot? That's good. It's it's basically gone through the two pieces of brass and soldered them on there. This little excess here is just for me just putting excess. And you see the flux. If it isn't flowing right away, add more flux and it will flow because the heat is going to help it along with, you know, melting the solder and the flux is what what makes the solder flow. That's real important. So we got one side done here. So you got your first side done in your motor mount there. You're gonna spin it around and you're gonna repeat the same process. Put this back here. Uh, you could put it here also, also if you want to, to get your iron in there better. I didn't do it to the other side that way. So what I'll do is I'll do it that way right here. And uh, Let me see something here. You always want to make sure that's also flush in the back and down. And this is being a little bit stubborn. So, and uh, so let me check that out. So you see that kind of, I think that should be okay. I'm not sure. But, uh, so I see this kind of like, when I push this down, this is, rocking a little so what I'll do is I'll just to make sure that's down and flush I'll add flux just go back to the side again and uh, hold this and then hit it again I don't know if you can see how that went down a little right there I did go down a little I right, just had to double check that because I felt like it was kind of crooked when I was moving up and down, but it looks better now. That gets a little warm, like I said, and let's cool it off. See so, you know, the heat come off that, so that's how hot that gets. So pretty much have it right there. That's a little bit better. I just kind of double check and make sure it doesn't like like the rail isn't a little bit cocked. So, and then that's what's nice about brass. You could heat it up again and then go at it. It's not, you know, it's not the end of the world if it isn't perfect. Because you could always re-manipulate it if you need to. That's why I use this to hold it down to kind of keep it from moving around. So I'll do it without a pin there like I did the other side. I love to pin there. So I'm going to put flux here just like that. See how that motor bracket moves a little? You always want to make sure you push it down. And, uh... Let's try that. And then we'll check everything to see if it's straight also after we do this, because we could always reheat it and remove it around. That's one thing, like I said, nice about brass. We'll get, you could even do this also, which I've done before, just, just like that. You can add more there, and it's gonna, tr see the flux is gonna move like it's supposed to. And you come off like that. That's a little bit better. And uh, we'll just cool it off so you don't burn yourself. You can see all the heat come off that, the steam come off that. And there's our rails right there. And that's pretty flush there. It's not wobbling around. That's what I was worried about. I think I pretty much got it on there pretty good. 
Then you can look at the back of it to make sure that those are flush down with the board and that, you know, where the bracket's at. And uh, I think we're okay. I don't see anything weird. As far as I can see, and that looks good. So there's our rails. Now you're going to see that it's bowed in just a teeny bit. Don't worry because you can always bow them a little out. If you need to be, and what you'll do is you'll measure with a caliper in between here to kind of get it pretty much you know where it should be so we could do that by putting these pins and what we'll do is we'll check it we'll get a caliper very good important tool to have we'll do millimeters and I'll do like from here like so that's at 2473 and then I'll lock it I'll come down here so it's a little bit narrow here so I'll do that see how it kind of spread it out a little so it's a little bit narrow, no big deal. You just have to pull the pins, push them, you know, more against that way, a little bit more this way, and kind of spread it out because that's just from the heat. So that's that's pretty damn close right there. I think we may have got it there. Maybe a little bit, not bad. That's fine, and. Uh, you know, you're, that's good. You're not, like I said, it's, you are just starting out building. Don't freak out too much about certain things if it doesn't look like it's working out. Just do your measurement and then go about your business. But you should be fine there once you get that all locked in. I'm going to lock them down here and then let them go here. And it should be the same still because I need to solder up in front there. So we got there, there, it's about the same back and forth that's the same you can remeasure but that's fine i'm not going to go any further into that so and there's there's that 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 measurement right there and again you go back and check it after you're done soldering it if you need to adjust it you could heat it up and spread it out it's it's no big deal it's, it's nice about resoldering and soldering again so we got these on and then the next step that i'm going to do is the front guide part so this is the guide holder to where your guide goes on your car. And uh, what I'm basically going to do is I've got my Cobra guide holder here. This is a Cobra COBO90, I think it is. Turn off my soldering iron. It's telling me, hey, shut me off. Clean it up before we do. And uh, this is basically the, the guide holder where it's going to, you know, guide's going to go in there and nut and what's what guides your car. like so I get these right here let me move this back here and uh, and I'm gonna put these right here and to kind of get an idea to kind of center this these are a little bit since I widen this out it's a little bit short I don't think it's going to kill anything. And what I usually will do is pin that and I'll solder it. So and that's how I kind of do my guide. Um, let me push that down. So what I'll do is I'll get a pin and put it right about here. And I'll get the body and put it on. And I see the red dots. That's, that's like where the wheel should go. Uh, but... Uh, Okay, I hope this is still streaming. There we go. <laughs> I thought I lost it. If Harry, you're out there, no, I haven't finished. I'm just kind of doing something. If you're, because I think you tried to call me and I'm doing this. I You haven't missed anything, Harry. All I've done was just solder the back here, solder the rails, and then I'm kind of doing my guide pin. So what I'm getting back to is where I put these red dots is the wheelbase of the car. So what I'll do is I'll kind of get where the wheelbase is there and then look inside here to see where my guide is at. Uh, you really want the guide to be tucked inside. I mean, you could have it sticking out, but if you have it sticking out too much and you have like a fender, or, excuse me, the bumper on here, then you could, you could, you know, start hitting your, your uh, bumper and everything with the guide. So I think right about there is where I'll put it. I think it should be good. Um, there's where I'll put it. I think it should be good. 
Um, I don't think you should interfere with anything. It'll be inside the car, so it'll look, you know, the car is, the guide is hidden. The car looks like it's, you know, moving on its own without a guide on it. <laughs> so, but basically what I've done here is I've got these, this rod, which is 1161 uh, brass rod. And I'm going to solder this in between these two to kind of make up for the gap that it has. And there's still a little bit of a gap. So what I'll do is I will get these pins and kind of set this in place so it doesn't move and this is real important you don't want this to be moving around you kind of want to get in and there tucked in the center as possible that's why i use this black line as a guide and uh let's see if i can get that there and i think i think that's pretty decent there um, let me move that there and you could also Pin it here and here to kind of, hope you can see that, to kind of center it. It's going to be a little bit tricky because I thought these were going to be wide enough and they're not. Now I can use um, 8151 square brass tubing. So if I feel that isn't enough, if I didn't think this was going to happen, that's why I was predicted. So here's the other one here. The other brass the other square tube and i could see that's going to be enough you know distance to fill that gap since this chassis is spread out a little after i soldered it and uh we could do that and then got another piece and see if it will kind of get it where we needed to go that's pretty good i don't know if this side maybe has yeah, a little bit of a gap there see so there's another size i could use but I think it'll be too fat. This one is the, uh, that one was the 8150. And this is the eight, that's 8150, 8150 is 330 seconds and 8151 is, uh, this is uh, 1 8th. So if I get these right here and I could do that, I think 1 8th may be better to line up in there. So you can see how that kind of really fits in there nicely. So what I'll do is I'll cut two of these down. Uh, I would say the same length as this. So what I'm gonna do is go to my saw that I have here and I have a Harbor Freight saw, which really works great. I'm just gonna mark it because I just wanna get this because these are these won't do it right here. These are too, they're, too, they're not thick enough and it's gonna leave a gap. And then you have to sit there and solder it and kind of make them kind of a gooey mess with solder or just too much solder. So let me cut these down real quick. Give me a moment. You're going to hear the saw go here. I don't think I need to show you that on the camera. It's just doing the saw. And let me cut these and then I'll show you where I'm going to be at with this to, to where I'll get it to where it's nice and snug on there. Let me move this. I'm going to have to do two cuts because I need two pieces. So. so that's why I'm off camera. I'm sorry if I kind of abandoned anybody there. I'm going to cut this. piece and then I'm going to mark it for the other one let me go right here grabbing another got to mark the uh, other one and let's be right here I'm just putting this on the money and let's see put my marker back there <laughs> and I'm gonna see if that should do it Give me a sec here, I'm almost done with doing this. All right, so I got my pieces. Let's see. Oh, that one's a little bit too long. Let me cut a teeny bit off. Just a little bit off there. What the hell what I was thinking. Oh well. Right there, teeny little piece that was just too much, and uh, that's pretty darn close. We'll go with that because I could always have cut it down a little. So, excuse me about that. So, here are my two pieces right here. So, this is where I'm going to put in between here and here to make the guide, you know, centered. 
And uh, as Harry has said, Christmas is coming. Have your Dremel. <laughs> this thing comes in real handy, and you could just sand these down a little. You know, if one's too long, than the other. Mind you, wear safety glasses because brass flies everywhere. I had to say that because I deal with a lot of safety meetings and stuff like that at where I work at. So you want to trim that down, and that's fine. It's not to be exact, but it's pretty close right there, just a little bit of a difference. Let me get that burr off. All right. And then what I'm going to do is place these right here, like so, like that. There you go, right there. And just like that, and you can put this right at the end of that, and there's there's the, uh, right there, exactly what you want. Uh, let me put a pin here, and that's pretty much how you get that there. Now I could move this out too, which I should. Let me see how it's gonna fit in the body though. But if, it, if you can't, if you don't wanna move that out, you could always cut these off and you can make them flush. So it's it's no big deal, so I may do that and then just cut it later when I'm done doing everything else. I'll put the body on there. And looks pretty tucked in there. I could probably, not center, I could probably move it out a teeny bit more, which is, you know, no big deal. But I may just leave it there because that's pretty good. And uh, let me move it out a tiny bit more. What the hell? Let me see. Oops, going off camera there. Sorry. <laughs> move it up. Oh, just a little bit. Oh, no, it slipped off. If it slipped off, no big deal. Just reposition it. And then what you could do also is put a pin right here to keep it from moving. And I'm going to do oh, just that. Uh, that will keep that from moving. And then you could move this up. And then kind of figure out what you want to do. So get the body of the car again. Put it on. Let me see if my wheelbase is right about there. So you can see where it'll be inside of there. It's kind of nice that you don't have a hood on this. I think that'll be fine. That That's that's good enough. I'll be good. Now I can solder that piece. Now you can see how you use different types of channel brass to kind of make up for like you know if there's too much distance those ones that i cut i thought they were going to work but now that i've soldered you can see that i had to move them out to get equal distance here and there close to equal distance like i said it doesn't have to be perfect you just want it to be pretty square square as you can get it so what i'll do now is i will solder these pieces make sure that's pushed down just like that i'll turn on my iron i will get my flux and what I'll do is I'll solder these two and then these two together same here and here like that I hope you could see that god I'm not blocking everything with my arms and then what I'll do is the iron is got to be turned on let me move my dremel out of the way I don't need it and why is my oh Interesting. Now my iron completely went out. Why is that? There you go. Plug pulled out in the back. There's a little slight technical difficulties. And let that heat up. And what I'll do is I'll get my iron. I hope you can see this. A little solder and then I'll go across here just like that all right and I could do the rest of it too it's no big deal but I'll probably do it in two small spots and then this right here I will do just this I usually do this also like I said to make sure that's in you can see how that's flowing just like that it's flowing perfectly like that there's that side right there what I'm going to do is do the other side. And uh, let's see. Let me get. Well, I'm just going to get more flux in case other stuff ran away from me. 
Put flux there. Get my iron. Just like that. You see right there? Boom, done. Get my iron here on this part. That the heat's gonna allow it to flow. Just like that. And then on the back part here, I could just, you know, run along and just kind of put a little flux in there because yeah, I won't need much solder. I don't want to do too much here. I just kind of do the rest of those rails to kind of make it combined. Oh, we need a little solder to do it. Just like that. Continue to solder. A little bit of more solder there because that wasn't enough. There you go. So now I've soldered that part right there, as you can see. A little bit of glob there. I'll just scoop that out a little. <laughs> and clean our iron. And uh, that's it right there. So that's your guide holders on there. Of course, I will cool it off. Just like so. And there's the guide holder. So you got... Most of the chassis right there. You can see front to back. And uh, that's pretty much it. So now we could go to body pads. So body pads are, are this brass strip here. And this is a uh, brass strip 8263 KNS number. This is 25 by thousand stick by half inch wide. And what we're going to do is you would make your body pads and you would solder them here. But you had to cut these and you figure the distance of your body on the inside. So we're talking about like seven millimeters. I usually make these about, I don't know, I'm trying to think here. Um, one and a half is a little bit too much. Maybe, uh, well, depends on how thick, how thick your channel is here. So this is like, what, like a little over half a millimeter there. So you kind of want to have these sticking out a little so that you could, you know, screw through into the body pad because the body pad will come over this. So I'd say, let me cut about here. I'm going to try that there. So that is, how many millimeters is that? Hold on a second. So that's about a millimeter and a quarter. So we're gonna try and cut that. So I'm gonna make a little bit of noise here and shave this down. So pop right back here. Let me just come over here to the table saw. And I'm gonna make a little noise. I should have had these pre-cut already and I apologize for that. So you guys might have to sit there and wait. And, uh, cut this down. This looks like here. So I'm going to. Uh, that may do. That's a little short. So I'm going to go a little bit longer. What was that? Millimeter and a half. Maybe I should go a millimeter and a half just for the hell of it. Let me get my marker. I apologize again for being missing from the camera. Go right there. Sorry, I'm away from the camera again. I'm just trying to get these. I should have pre-cut this, like I said, and I apologize again. You guys wait here. I think a millimeter and a half 
should be good. Getting a little bit hot. <laughs> and you can see right here, that's actually pretty good. So we'll go with a millimeter and a half. A millimeter was a little bit too tiny. Or a millimeter and a quarter is what it was. A millimeter and a half. Let me cut two, three more pieces here. That just got injected. Oh, that's just great. Okay, here it is. So, sometimes these things get flung in the back of the shelf and I can't see it. So I'm going to cut another piece. Oh, this one's just a little bit longer. That should be okay. Let me cut it out. Forgive me for being off camera. I'm just trying to get these three pieces cut so we can continue. Because I want to show you the whole thing. I was going to stop here, but I want you to at least see the how I do the body mounts. Let me come out more. <coughs> trying to get these cut exactly the same. And I'm just using the previous one I cut as a guide. Yeah. We'll do that. <laughs> here I should be good right there we get the last one going and should be done and yes I do vacuum every night here because there's a lot of brass that gets sprinkled over here in my shelf that's why I have this set up in a closet. So there's our four pieces. I apologize that I had to be off camera to do this. But I figured you want to finish it all off. At least you can see where the body pads that I do. Put the excess in there. So here we are again. So again, you can see where I cut there. Little pieces. Drill that out. Oh, Soldering iron is on the whole time. And so what I'll do is... Uh, Trim that, like I said, Harry has said, hey, you know, Christmas around the corner, man. These trembles come in damn handy, man, when you want to do stuff, especially on box stock cars, when you want to modify stuff to, to have the wheels fit. This is the best little tool to have in your arsenal. Get it on Amazon. Talk to your sweetheart. Be good to her. Maybe she'll get something for you. And a little trim there. So these are the body pads. Trim there. So see how handy this is? This is what's nice about that. So I got these about an inch, or excuse me, a millimeter and a, and a half. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just put them in the spot where you want them in. This area is where your mount, so about from here to here is where you want them. So you would put it down and kind of look in the body and see where you would put the mounts at. Uh, and how I usually put these on, and I've done some videos on it, on my uh, last YouTube videos I did. So I get this piece here, and this is kind of like a uh, little guide here. This is a little bit too high. So, see how that fits right there perfectly, the same, same height. So this is just a piece of that 8264 and something flat that I just kind of threw together. And what I'll usually do is, I can even do this, see? Is do that and then just pin it so it doesn't tilt down. Uh, 
I was running out of pins here. I gotta go to the other uh, other spot there. And uh, you can kind of uh, put that backwards. Well, not really. One second. So you could do that. And uh, pin this side. Hopefully it'll hold up. Uh, or you could get another 8264 piece like that. And it's exactly flush. You know, and you could put your mount solder right there. Being sure not to solder this piece onto that because that can't happen. So you could start by soldering the back here because that's not near this. And then you could take this off and solder the other side. So that's, that's one body pad right there. So you could get your car and kind of figure, well, uh, it probably should go back a little. And uh, as you could see, this is kind of how you would look at it. Hope you could see that and see where you would put your body pad. It should go back here. So what then what I'll do is I will adjust this and move it back and put it further back here. Just put this pin here so it doesn't move. And I got it back there. See? Whoop. will come off there. You could also do this. Put a pin there so that doesn't move. See, like so. And uh, you see there's a, there's a little... There's a little area there, so you don't have to worry about soldering this piece on accident. Uh, I can move this back more like that. So this way give you more distance. So you don't worry about soldering it. Then what you do is you can check where it's going to lie on your body. So it's about back there. and that, That's pretty cool. I mean, I'm going with it now because this is just like an instructional video I'm doing. So that's a pretty good spot, and I'll go with that. And then what you could do is... Um, line it up and then you can even pin it if you need to pin it you know keep it from moving back here and then you can get another pin and put it right here to keep it kind of like stable somewhat just like that and then uh you can also do this to hold it in place once you i usually do this I see it's pretty even there where it should be going. It's kind of a little ballet act that you do. I'll get my iron turned on while I'm holding this. I'll get some flux to get it ready. I'm going to only solder the side that it isn't near that, that one that I have it against. Because you don't want to solder them both on accident. Once you get one side settled in, you can do the other side easily. And get your solder ready. I'm going to do this with my left hand. Get a little bit of solder. There we go. And then come back here. And just like that. And it's on. Just like that. So I'll take all these off. Take that out of the way. Move that. And uh, there you go. It's on. Now you can solder that side. And you should be good. It doesn't take much. I'll do this. I'll go right here. Drop there. A uh, little dabble, do you? I keep saying that. That's from a movie line. <laughs> and I'll get a little bit of solder here. I hope you can see this as I'm doing this. I'll come at this angle like this. And then... And that's fine. Like that. It's good. You come here and retouch up this if you need to. Not gonna go anywhere, and that's it. There's your bracket. That's your body pad ready to go. Then you're gonna repeat the process all the way around with uh, this one here. Repeat the same thing. Get this little bracket, you know, that I made again. Put it, oops, got it upside down. Put it here. Uh, pin it to kind of hold it against the chassis because you know it's got that other piece this piece right here is for uh i gotta move that out of the way too this piece right here is for uh if i do um how would you say uh another i don't know let's say like another pad on a different one that's why i had it that way where i could put pieces in there and stack it and make a for a different chassis that i did it on i can't remember so you could place that there and then get your car again and uh, see where it'll position and that's a pretty good spot that right around here which is good 
it's a good placement where you have it there so if I do that you kind of see where it's going and you don't want it too close to here because you don't want the tire to get in the way or any interference you want to make sure you're clear of that then what we'll do is we'll position it again with the pins by pinning this back here so you can go up against it and uh, pin right here and another pin in the front of it and you got it in position there and what you could do is of course use this well right till if I hold it in place we'll get a little flux because the iron's still on and going pull flux here we'll do that one next so you because we don't want to do this one because it's going to solder it to that so see there's a little gap there just you want to make sure that's just away from this piece and it is enough so then what i'll do is i'll hold it here get some solder like so and come over here one thing you want to be certain also don't don't solder your pin so make sure you just put enough to hold it together because you always go back over it so that's that one right there. I hope you can see this. Let me point this down more. Um, so you got that in place like that. And then I could do is take everything off because I don't need it right now. I could take this off. That's already, you know, pretty, pretty on there, pretty good. And then uh, pretty flush. Then what I'm going to do is solder that end. So let me get it right here. A little flux. Make sure you got solder. A little solder here on the tip. Let's use my left hand. Let me try my right here. And I'm gonna go right here. That's pretty good right there. See how that sizzles? That's it. There you go. And you can take this off and go back here and kind of touch this up if you want to spread it out more. Like that. Which is good. There you go. There's your body mounts. Those are your body mounts of the car. And you can compare them where they're going to sit there, and that's going to sit there perfectly. Well, that's perfect where you want it. That's good enough. That's that's yeah, that's fine. And then you're going to repeat the same side again. Uh, if this seems a little crooked or off, you could always trim it down to just, you know, with the. Because this may even cut a little bit crooked, and it's, it happens. It's, it's not perfect, but then you could also round the edges off too and uh, do it as well. So I'm gonna get my piece. You know, I'll repeat the same side again with what I did here, which is I wanna kind of get it in. Obviously you wanna get it in the same spot. Uh, so we'll put this right here. Let me go right there, cause I want the edge of this only holding that up. Cause I don't wanna solder these two pieces together. So I'll pin that there. Pin it there to hold it. I'll put my piece here and kind of line it up with what I did. If this seems like it's got, like, see, it's got a little ridge on there from the cutting. Make sure you get your, you could file it off with your Dremel. Yeah, get it clean. Like that, so it's flush. And then you'll, also what night might be flush because of all this solder right here, but that's not too much, so it shouldn't affect it too much. But we'll get it. Once you hit heat, if there's like a little, see how it's kind of tilted up. Once you heat this up, that's going to make that stuff go flush and then it'll solder on there flat. So we want to line it up basically the same way we had this one here. So we'll put a pin there. Kind of line this up there. That looks like it's lined up with the other one. And, uh, let me put, did I run out of pins? No, I didn't. Another one here. Let's see. Kind of want to get it right, you know, with the other one. So I think that's pretty close. If it's a hair off, don't, like, again, don't get too neurotic about it. It's a hair off, it's a hair off, man. It's, you know, just build how you could build it. This needs to come out a little bit more because it's not flush with the end of the chassis rail here. I have to mess with this some more. Okay. I think we're pretty much there. 
Mm. All right, we're gonna go. There's my soldering iron screaming at me. Hey, you're still on. What we'll do is we'll again. I'm gonna hold it right here with this. This is my little rat tail. Come behind here because we just want to get behind there. Now I put myself in a weird spot here and get this some solder. Come back here. You see, I kind of put myself in the. Oh, I see. I almost did the wrong thing there, but I caught myself. So I should have went to the front because that other piece, <laughs> the other piece of that's being the holder back here. I'm almost soldering those together. So almost made a mistake there. See that happens. Everybody makes mistakes. Put them right here, and then let it go. And then what I'll do is I'll remove this. Make sure I don't solder that on there. So we don't want that. That will really ruin your... If you feel you need to hold this on also, you can do it also if you're afraid it's going to move. And then just... Just like that. There you go. That's that side. Is it pretty much close? Not too bad. Looks like it's almost even on the money there. I mean, and we're gonna, and as you can see, they're they're nice and level, like they should be. You can see they're nice and level. They're not like tipped. They are a teeny bit. You could always move it around and reheat it. Now I'm gonna get the other side, the back here, and uh, line it up. I'm gonna clean this up, of course. Get burrs on it. Nice, like, get rid of your burrs. Come on the back here. I'm going to repeat the same process with this booger here. And so I'm going to move that out of the way for now. And then I'm going to go like so. Pin this up there so I don't move. I'm going to line this up back here. Let me see. Right there. And... Here. So let's see how it holds it on nicely. So let me see. It's maybe a teeny bit longer, but you know, you could always shave it down if one's longer than the other. It's like I said, it's you know, it's not the end of the world. Don't don't make yourself you're always your own worst critic. I am heavily my own worst critic. And sometimes I'm like not happy with things. I'm like, that looks like yeah, that doesn't look good. <laughs> and you feel like you have to redo it again. Uh but it's just it's your you just want to start off a little slow and not overdo it. So that uh, looks pretty good right there. So then again, what I'm going to do is get my little rat tail file. Make sure I got my flux ready. And I'm going to hold it right up. Oh, see how it moved a little. I hope that. Yeah, that should be it. So I'll hit it there. Put a little flux. Put my head in here and make sure. I think that looks pretty good. Let's find out. Clean my iron. Get a little bit there. That's like that. All right, so that's on, right? So we don't need that anymore. Move that out of the way. Take those off. Take that off. Get that out of the way too. And we're gonna do the very last part of this. Dab there. Uh, right. This body pad. Oop, a little bit too much there. That's okay. All right. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Don't put your tongue on that. There you go. So, there's your body pads. So that's basically a chassis. They're completed. Uh, there's other one little other thing you could do is put little tubes here. If you want to have like for your wires, you can use a square one or a round one. So if you want to like put some like right here and solder them, you can so that your guide wires will run and they'll be kind of like neat on the side and then to make that loop to make the guide go back and forth, you know, recenter nicely. So you could do that as an extra. Um, that's not hard. You just put it in a spot to where your wires are going to run, you know, I don't know, say about, say about a millimeter in length, maybe a millimeter and a half. I've done it to most of them. And, uh, 
do that. So the very last part, once you got this all, well, actually, we're not done, actually. Excuse me. So the part we have to do is the, center, the, the front axle. And I'm sorry, I completely, like, missed that like a dope here. Uh, <laughs> so the front axle is what we're talking about. Here we go. So this is what we're talking about, right? The front axle. <laughs> so I'll continue on with this. We got, like, 70 minutes. If you want to hang around, that's fine. So I'll do that part. Uh, so... I generally take everything off here. I don't need any of this. And uh, I'll usually clean the chassis, kind of go wash it off a little bit because it's got flux all over it. And uh, take all these out like so. Now there's two ways you could do this. You could do this without the tires on or you could do it with the tires on. I prefer to do it with the tires on because I kind of sit my body on it and kind of see what it looks like. That doesn't mean you have to do it. You could do it without the tires. And um, what I do is I get my wheels and the tires and I uh, slip these on. Give me a sec here. I have to paint these wheels <laughs> and I'll put these on like so let me just snug this up because we don't need them coming off you kind of figure out where everything's going here All right I'm gonna get my front axle All right and uh I usually have something pre-bent, but I don't think I have anything pre-bent. There's several ways you could put your front axle on. You could stack brass tubing like this and get your height. And, you know, make this obviously shorter so that it'll just be like a step. Or you could do like a U, uh, a bend a piece of a 1161 brass out of a U. And make a U shape. Here's one piece that I have kind of lying around. Sometimes I keep these. And here's an example of that. And you just make a, I don't know if you can see that, gosh, I'm right in the way of the camera. And there goes the front axle too. And you can do like this, so where you solder it. This is obviously too large. That's how you make your, you know, front bracket. I did have a piece here that I was going to make to solder on, but I don't really need to because I could always solder here for the for the axle tube to the axle tube holder so that was a piece i had because that was when i thought i didn't need these here and then what you would do is get your front wheels right i'm gonna just snag this up a little bit uh it's on right here all right so this is kind of how you would do the positioning of stuff i get pins and I put them behind the tires here like so. I want to do it, you know, evenly, not crooked. So that's pretty much where my mark is. So that's pretty straight. I don't have it on the center line here. I'm just using it as an example. And then what I'll do is get... Uh, so depending how much of a rake I want, then I get like nuts or washers. And I put it under the guide here. I'll use one. And when I use one... Oh, excuse me. There's one thing I didn't do. I'll show you in a minute. So actually, when you're done setting it up, and I don't have this on the center line of my board, and you're going to put these pins in the back tires like so. Just kind of keep it from moving. And then what I do is I kind of like determine what the rake's going to be. Eh, it's kind of like a little rake where it's kind of skipped down. That's kind of cool. You know, or you can make it go higher. It's up to you or you want it level. It's how you want to play it out. And what you do is, so here's my, uh, that would be my wheelbase right here for this car. Right up in the front. And I'll pin this right here as well to keep the wheels from moving around. The tires. And pin the front. You want to make sure you get this like lined up straight also. You don't want to just pin them and then just start soldering stuff. I want to make sure that these are like you know equal distance from each other from front to back because if it's like crooked or off like this and you're gonna have a problem that eh, that's just an example that looks 
somewhat straight, so does the back. So then what I'll do is I'll get the body, and I'll put the body on, and I'll kind of mimic how it'll look like on there. That's actually in a good spot. Looks like a low rider. <laughs> Everybody loves low and slow. So I mean, I how I how I put this body on will depend how high I want it and stuff like that. But so that's that's pretty much it right there. I mean, that's what you're looking for. And I know the tires are kind of like grabbing a little, but you're gonna sand these down and it will change. But you see the body's allowed to go back and forth. So there's oops, give me not showing it. So there's room. You just have to position your body carefully. I made these a little tight, so. It may bite me in the ass, I don't know, but I could always make an adjustment. You see they're catching there. That's because they're not shrewd. So, yeah, see, they're catching just a little. I mean, you need to trim the outsides too, so. But, oh, I mean, that's basically what you're looking to do. And if you do, if that is the position you want, or you know how you want the body to be, I'll pin that right there, and I got that washer. And that's what's holding it, excuse me, and that's what's holding it up to give me a height. And then what I'll do is I will make sure everything's equal distance and not like this isn't cockeyed. You want to make sure this is straight perpendicular, not like crooked. So you'll just kind of check that out as you do it. Then you want your distances to be equal here as best as you can. Obviously, the, the rear axle ain't going to go anywhere because you've saw it. You've got it on there already. Then what I'll do is if I like where I have it, I'll put pins in like this, the front and the back. Uh, this one's a little bit tougher to do because I can't see. And just like that. Just like that to hold them from going side to side. And uh, you see it like that. Then uh, I'll do the same for the front, but the, for the front, I want to make sure that, now it's all coming apart here. I want to make sure that uh, that I don't see how far off that is to one side. You want to make sure that you're lining these up pretty good. And again, this is not doing what I want it to do. So hey, take that out and I'll move this over. You see. There's too many pins will get in the way. I'll put these here. And I'll put this one here. So I'll look at my distance here between the, you know, between the frame here and the, the edge of the tire. And what I'll do is I'll measure. I'll measure out. You know, from the tire to there. So that's what? A full half millimeter. And then from here to here is about almost a half millimeter, <laughs> not quite. And I'll move it over a little and kind of remeasure the distance from here to here. Again, so we got like, that's half a millimeter again. And so from here to here, it's half a millimeter. So that's pretty good right there. Looks pretty, pretty good. And I'll get pins and pin right here to keep the wheels from moving. Right. You also want to make sure this is, you see, when you look at this, it, see how crooked that is? So this has to come back, so that's a problem. So what I'll do is I will pull this back and repin it. Pull this forward and repin it. And then look at it again to make sure it's nice and straight. And you want it fairly straight. It looks, to me, it looks a uh, teeny bit crooked still. So I'm going to go back a little bit more, right, and again, you could do your distance check from, excuse me, from here to the front, so I hope you can see this here, I'm trying to do this where you can see everything, so you could kind of go like this, so you kind of measure, you know, that's it almost a full millimeter and you do the same here that's not quite so this needs to go back a little you just have to manipulate this to to look at it and make sure you got it pretty straight you know it's you just gotta use your eyes and you know you tell me hey does that look straight <laughs> I mean, you just gotta uh, and if it does go on crooked and you feel it's crooked you can 
reheat it and move it. Don't, it's not, like I said, the world isn't, you know, the world ain't going to end if you don't get it right the first time. And then you can look at your body and put your body on it. Kind of see if it's the same distance on your body too, you know. I see like that. I kind of get an idea. Uh, yeah, but anyways, this is just, you know, just going through the motions here. And just make sure that everything's pretty sure. That looks pretty good, but I could be wrong because things are moving around a little. <laughs> and what you'll do is you will bend a piece of the uh, 1161 brass stock. I have some here. Which I think I don't. So I'm going to go into my storage here of brass stock. <laughs> Out. Sorry for being off camera. Okay, it's a piece of 1161 brass stock. What you can do is cut a piece. I suggest you get in some real heavy cutters, some Mamba Jamba cutters. Um, how much you want to cut? Shoot. I mean, I would start by just doing maybe six millimeters. So, I mean, I'm just going to go on a guess here because you figure this is four. So you want to say, eh, let's see. If it's a little long, you could always chop it off on the end. So I'm going to go with, uh, we'll go with eight. That'll give us a lot of, a lot of playing room. More is better because if you come up short you can't add but you could always take away and so i go by what harry tells me <laughs> harry tells me that you could always take away on this video you could always take away but you can't add so here's a piece right here now you could bend this with pliers you know because this stuff isn't super hard i use these micro mark ones that i got but eh, they, they work all right i could have saved money by using these but you could use these or these big ones to bend your uh your U's to make it a U shape. So what I'll do is I'll go here and I figure, let's see, let me get these out of the way. Don't need those anymore until a little bit. So say, say that's pretty much equal right there, I'm guessing. So say I wanna make my bends right about here and here. So it'll give me this much room to solder this there. So there are my bending points right there where I marked them with the marker. And then I'm gonna get this micro mark tool. You don't have to buy this. I just bought it because I thought it'd be better, but yeah, it's, it's all right. And uh, what I'm gonna do is, see right here, I'm gonna bend it like so. Kind of make a 90 like that. And I'm gonna get my other mark. Uh, and uh, I make sure I get that straight like that and I'm going to bend it also and kind of like that it's a little bit off the only thing about brass is you can manipulate it more so there you go there's a uh, Perfect U right there, that's pretty good. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get this and you're going to pre-fit it. And uh, obviously if this is, you gotta see how that's kind of off a little, just bend it back to kind of get it even. <laughs> and you can do it by lying here to make sure that this, cause one end may pick up like this and it may be crooked. So you, you could manipulate, manipulate it with your hands a little. And then what you'll do is you'll place it here and this is pretty much your your bracket you'll do is you'll solder here and there and then you'll solder it on the ends of the tube on the end of the tube and uh that'll that's you know once you get your height set that's what you would do and uh and that that's it i'm you know you've seen the soldering part that's pretty much it that's how basically you would do this chassis and uh, you could use two different sizes or three different sizes of the you know the side rails again like i said you could use the skinnier one a middle size this is the thicker one 
Uh, it really is how you want to build it. So I hope this has helped you out a lot. That's pretty much a chassis build. Uh, again, I'm no expert. I do the things I want to do it. There's no right way or wrong way. If you could do it a different way that's easier for you, by all means do it. That doesn't mean that, hey, you know, Area 51's raceway says you have to do it this way. That's, that's bull out. That's bull. You don't have to. You do it how it works for you. But this is a complete chassis. And uh, I won't solder this on because I kind of have to line it up. I'm kind of want to, this is kind of critical for me. So I make, so I make sure this thing looks right. So it's not crooked or nothing. I don't have to redo it because I've had that happen. So I ain't going to really solder this on camera because you guys could pretty much do the rest of this on your own. I've shown you the body mounts, how to do the tube and all that stuff and size it up. I may have made these a little bit too wide, but I think I'll be okay. Uh, when you're finally done with everything, the very last part you want to do is cut these. The reason why you leave this intact during the whole soldering because this is kind of like a structural integrity thing. Because if you cut these off and start soldering, this is going to distort and then those are going to bend in different directions because they're being heated up and then you're going to have a problem with axle alignment. So once you're done soldering everything completely, even your, you know, your front axle, and you have your little your wire tubes don't worry i mean you could still cut it off and then do your wire tubes but once you're done you're going to saw these off there because the gear has to go here and the, the pinion has to meet with the crown gear here and you need that space and then clean it up you can polish it you could use 1200 grit sandpaper and just sand down or sand some of this down and then you could polish it with mothers and use that dremel that i showed you and get a little small vise and put a little buffing wheel and buff this out or you could clean it all up and you could paint it like I just painted two modified uh, chassis that I just did. And you could paint it up and it'll look really beautiful. I recommend the Rust-Oleum 2X paint. That stuff really is really nice and it needs a nice shine. And you basically, you know, the rest of it is just, you know, making your interior, painting your car and then mounting it. I've done a video already on mounting it. But I could do another live video on mounting the body onto this once everything's done and stuff. But... That's it from Area 51 Raceway. I hope this has helped you out a lot, and I hope you build one. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. You guys take care and have fun racing. Thank you.